Hi guys, welcome back to another episode. This week we're back on the boat and back into Boatworks. Getting the boat ready to cross oceans. Lots of work ahead. So let's get into it. We are an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. So we got back on the boat yesterday, uh, yesterday morning and we had been moved. We were over there. They had moved us because the boat behind us went back in the water. And this morning they are moving us again but I'm pretty sure this will be the last time we get moved until we get put back in. Because we're going over here and they don't have to move us for anybody. <laughs> Given up coffee and it's been nine months and all I've been on is the mud water. Especially this one, it's the OG blend. I love it. I had to come up here and have my mud water because downstairs it's just creaking. We get moved on a trolley and uh, it just doesn't sound good. That is uh, pretty close to the old boat there. <laughs> oh my god. Got the uh, vocal cords ready to go out, but uh, we do a pretty good job here. We'll see how they go. Really cutting it fine. Well, hi there, neighbour. <laughs> it's like we're rafting up. All right, we've been moved into our final position until we get put back in the water. Let the boat work begin. First job was getting the dinghy down. Our dinghy is one of the most important things to get right for our adventures. So stay tuned as we make our high field exploration ready in an up and coming video. Bit noisy in here, but it's been a while. I just wanted to get the engine a run. Got the water going into the sea chest, and uh, it's purring like a kitten. Flush. Found actually a little leak too on our waterline. I just taped it. It's a plastic, one plastic fitting. I didn't like installing them. It was on here. I'm going to change them out. I just don't like plastic, guys. It's just rubbish. My opinion. Could be okay, but it's like something solid. Good uh, bronze fitting. Can't beat it. Right, so we're going to remove some um, skin fittings here, some through holes. Uh, inside here we've tried to turn the valves and they're turning and the ball inside's not shutting off properly so in the event of an emergency we can't isolate so I don't know what the problem is yet but these have a backing plate and then the valve so I should be able to hopefully um, I don't have a step wrench which is a tool specific for through holes but what you can do is get yourself a spinner we can set that up there so grabs on the inside here use whatever you like I just use a spanner um, these are going to be super tight I'm assuming so I've got myself a little bar here for a bit of leverage Ugh, no. so there's not budging so that's just a standard wrench there so what I'm gonna do is somehow get Bella on with this pole and hopefully uh -uh, Bella the other end there Oh yeah, there's movement. Yes. Okay, keep going, keep going. Oh. oh, it's amazing what a bit of leverage does. I couldn't move that with just the spanner.
pretty soft, so I'd say they've used 4200, not 5200. You don't want to use 5200. Uh, that's 3M product. If you use 5200, you won't pull it out and it's like that. It's pretty much permanent, so 4200 is the way to go. Yes, if they all came out like this, I'd be happy. This one Does it look like done. it's okay? Can you just reuse it? Okay, so I will clean all this up. I want to make sure it looks like it's been epoxied in the past, so it looks like it's been done properly. So we'll clean all that up and have a look. There was a lot of corrosion. You can see I've sanded that right down to get through all the pitting. The colour's not the best and it is pretty thin. It's out now, we'll be replacing these. And then we're going to pull out next behind here is the valve and the backing plate. So I'll bring that all out here and reassemble it and show you guys what it looks like. But we're going to go through and replace all of these if we can get them out. And um, all right, that's the first bit out. All right, this is number two. So we hold. hold that gently there. You got to keep pressure on it. So gently. Hold on. Watch out. Okay, hold that with pressure on it. You're twisting it. Yeah. Yeah. The Alpha looks like she's had the measles or chicken pox. Oh, there's only one little notch in here. You may need to go a bigger size. It might work. We'll see. Just knock that end off. Oh, that's going to be a mess. And how are we going to get that out? Oh, I thought it was all too easy. Well, just leave that one. So I might just have to cut that off. Excuse All right, me. So this one here only had one locator in there, not two. So as I tried to turn it, it's too much force. It just strips the locator, so all the lug. So I'm gonna leave that one. I'm gonna come back and grind that flat and then pull this ring off and then I'll just push that one straight through. Okay. I got some luck. Third one's a charm. <coughs> Come out easy. Lost a lot of colour and it's it, it did have it made it had a lot of pitting but I ground it out. So right, no, we're, no, on to, do that. we're on to number it four. Was the wrong way. I'm gonna I do got that it. so it locks them okay. both in. It's really tight. It's really tight right now. I think you should try. Snap both off. Bam bam. There is a little bit of a lip on here. We might. It did start to move, but it snapped. Uh, yeah. Actually, it looks a bit pink under there where it snapped. Goodness, it's been sucked out of the. Uh, we have an electrolysis problem, which we really need to get on top of because we're going to have new through holes. Yeah, so we've got to go through the whole grounding system on the boat and make sure everything's connected properly. The joys of a freaking old boat. Good decision, honey. I don't know. When it's all done, I'll say yes, but in the process, mind you, we could have paid a lot of money for the boat and then you'd be upset. Bye. Six, and then got this weird ass thing here, and then we've got an even weirder thing here. <laughs> oh, another one. Yeah, that one's a little Eight. bit suspect. It's got a bit of rust coming out the side of that. Yeah, this one. Very this one. thin, and it's got corrosion. So that's yeah, we don't know what we're looking that at. That one's two dag buggers. I do them all. We also have these little guys. So these are like washing machines and air conditioners and water makers and stuff like that, but we didn't install them so we don't know what it is so we're just going to make sure they're all sealed. It is, but we're just popping it. It's too small. Yeah. 
need a bigger one? Yeah, it's uh... No, we have a bigger one? No. That won't. No. There you go, so there. What are you going to do now? We can cut them off. Um, that's a shame. Right, this is the weird one. Oh, it looks like it's not going to move easy. No. Need my leverage. I'll get my bar. <sighs> Lefty loosey, righty tidy. So we're going to undo this anti clockwise. That sucks. <laughs> I just stood on my glasses. Oh no, honey. <laughs> oh, I don't have glasses anymore. <laughs> Show it <me>, right, mate. <laughs> it's still good. It's still got life in them. Well, look at that go. just trying to help Lee do this and uh, whack myself in the head with the bar. It was exactly this scenario but I don't know what happened, it slips and that bar went into my head. Wait, Dad let it slip? Was that your fault? No. Was it my fault? Well, Dad gets angry at me when I let it slip. Can you lock it on or do you need me to do it? Decided to get the bar and pull it into her head, so I've had to take back over. Uh, Tell them the real story. I said, Sarah, I just watch that it doesn't hit your head. If it slips, it slipped and she hit her head. <laughs> and I had the UV in my hand. This is tomorrow job. So the little tangs on the side here that you'd either put your step wrench into or in our case the spinner, to turn, they snapped off. So what we've had to do is just cut around the rim here with the die grinder, which only takes a second. Oh, so warm, but... So that just removes the ring like that. And now we can just push the whole unit through um, from the inside. You can either tap that through or loosen it up. So that's that part. We'll get Taj to go around and clean all this up. We'll remove that little bit of gel coat around here that's underneath these and then we'll run the new barrier coat right around in the hull and we'll inspect the insides here and make sure it's all sealed up nicely. Go from there. Get these out. That one was off. There's one more under here. It's only got one lug. Tried to fix it. Some things you just can't <laughs> fix. He thought he fixed them and then he just pulled it off. He said, these glasses, like, they don't die. Well. I think they have. They have they now. Have now. But, oh, look, Bella will poxy that up for me. They'll be boatyard sunglasses. It's a job for Bella. He's had them for years. Lasted a while, which yeah. is strange. Usually you break them pretty quickly. Yeah. It's an odd looking fitting. I've actually never even seen one like this. I don't even know if that's sort of like a nut that's been put over. It's a strange one. Reasons too is that our bonding system and wires, we've, we really want to go over it. We've had a little bit of electrolysis and we just want to, it's peace of mind. We'll just get them all done and we'll make sure it's all bonded properly. Um, I know you can use plastic these days, but personally, I'm not a fan of plastic, so even though I have a plastic boat, I don't like my fittings to be plastic. No 
behind them look good. No, this water's got in behind here, so this is not a good looking one. All the sealant's so old, it's, you can see it's really let go everywhere. So it's probably a good time to do them. There's a bit of a void in that one. Sealant wasn't packed in properly. It's all good. The, the lugs break. It means they're old. It means yeah, they're, not they're pretty, strong. pretty brittle, but there's a lot of pressure on there too. Uh, have to die grind that one out. Alright, guys, behind this door we have a valve. And the last bits of the remains of the through hole, which I couldn't get off on the outside, are probably going to come off under the inside because I had to remove the faces of the through holes. But what I'm doing is this is our first valve. I've just got my phone with me. Um, I'm just going to take a photo before I completely remove the valve. So I'll know uh, if I need a reference for later on the orientation of the valve handles and where the lines um, connect to the valve. So. I'll take note of each one I remove, I'll take a photo and then I can um, refer back to that later if I'm concerned about the orientation or position of the valve. So that's what I like to do with a lot of stuff because there's so many jobs and projects going on at the moment, you just sort of, it's so easy to forget what size or the orientation or what line goes where, it's just easy to clip photos along the way, put it in some notes and so yeah, this is the first valve, I'm going to get into this and remove this. We'll get them all out, lay them all down, and then make a list of what we need to order. It's not going to be a fun list. It's going to be an expensive list. It is one of those expensive jobs, but you are only as good as your weakest link in a boat. So if one of these valves goes and you're not on the boat, uh, it can be pretty catastrophic. These aren't too bad. Um, when we reinstall these, we'll have a plug next to them just as a safety precaution. It's always handy to have the right size plug so if something does break or let go, you can plug it underway. Um, but the main concern for us is our sea chest, which has a 3 inch through hole, um, which can let an exceptional amount of water in really quickly. So we've started we're just going to replace the lot and we know we're good for a minimum of 10 years if not some people say lifetime with these fittings so it's definitely going to see us out providing they're um, well maintained greased annually when you haul out um, they're bonded properly to the vessel he didn't think he had much access but then realized that the cupboard above him opens <laughs> now we can get to it better <sighs> Uh, at the same time, this hose will inspect and see the condition of these. We, it is an expense, but we'll inspect it and see how it looks. Once you start moving old stiff hoses around, they can crack depending on the age of them. It's not cheap, but it's one of those things. You do it, you do it right, and then it's good for 10 years plus. Um, and again, you're only as good as your weakest link. You put a new valve in, you don't replace the hose, and your hose lets go because you've maneuvered it to get it off the um, existing one. Yeah, it gets expensive, time consuming, frustrating, but once it's done, these things, I know they're not, you don't really see them, they're not cosmetic, you look at the boat and you don't see it, it's behind the cabinets and that, but for me personally, I'd rather have an unvarnished surface than a uh, dodgy through hole, as opposed to having a beautifully painted finish on the inside and behind the walls is all old rubbish. So. Yep, I'll keep going. It's very pink looking. So there may have been a bit of uh, electrolysis in here. Again, we don't know the history. They're very... They still look reasonably okay. Hi right, guys, so I've pulled this out. This is our first one. There's a little bit of discolouring around here where obviously there's been a bit of salt water when they've either greased it or whatnot. Same as here. The um, uh, the bush under here is probably a bit worn and may have had some moisture. It wasn't leaking, but it's just got natural oxidization around there. Overall, the color looks pretty good, um, and it's a solid bit of kit, this. Now, these, you can get a rebuild kit for them. So at the moment, 
when I turn the handle, nothing's actually turning on the inside. So the valve itself's not sealing or shutting off. I can get a rebuild kit for these. It really does seem wasteful just to buy a new valve where these are about or well, anywhere up to $500. So we'll open it up, clean it up. Like I say, have a good look inside and see how it all is. I may even, the sealing around this is all breaking up. I don't know what they've used. It's been a long time since these have been taken apart if they have ever been taken apart. So I'll undo that, reseal that. I'll show you what it looks like when we've cleaned it up. So here it is now. This one here has been soaking overnight and it's the vinegar's really cleaned that up. And this one I've just pulled out. So we're gonna put that in the soak. Uh, we'll soak that in vinegar. But Ty's gonna wire brush all this and get this looking pretty. We will have to remove the through hole. We had to cut them off. We, they, we couldn't turn them. The locator's snapped in there. But once this is cleaned up, we're gonna undo this here. We're gonna put a new ball in and some new seats. And uh, it should be all operational again after a good tidy up. We'll reinstall. Show you what it looks like when it's all wire brushed and cleaned up. All right, so I'm under the last one. Well, the last one for today. I've removed four valves. Tar just cleaned them up. I've been through. I'm just under my last piece, which I've just just managed to crack free. I've put two bolts in here, and I've just been swinging off this with the bar, which I had no luck earlier, and then I've had it soaking and penetrating oil for I don't know half the day. So I was able to crack the seal here. So this is the last one. So, I'm still tight. All right, so we've got eight valves. We've done four of them so far. I've got them to a serviceable stage, meaning that we've cleaned them up. I've released all the screws. I've turned everything. I've opened it all up. And what we'll need replacing on all the valves is a new ball and a new uh, valve stem. So providing that's a cost-effective way to do it, we're gonna reuse them. Because there's nothing wrong with the actual valve itself, the housing and the whole lot of it. It's just the ball and the valve stem. I'll give you a look. I'll open this one up. So Tars has been at the wire brush all day. So they're pretty solid bit of gear. So there's a bush here and there's one below here, inside here, and there's a ball. So that's the bush kit. That's the that's the kit, the rebuild kit. So it's two bushes and um, the ball. Now the other part, which is another part of the kit we'll need to replace, is the valve stem. Get it out. Here is a broken valve stem, which goes under here. And the ball, you can see there's just no turning this ball at all. So in order for the valve to open and shut, that turns like so. But as you can see, in a cost-effective way, if we can replace these, well, it'll save spending near $500 a piece. We've got eight of them, so hopefully we can rebuild them or we're not eating this month. <laughs> Roughly what's going on, but as you can see, the actual housing is fine. It's, it's, it's a solid bit of gear. It's just a matter of this replacing the ball, the seals, and the valve stem. If we can do that, we're back in business. I made myself a little template here. I've got four bolts into the bench and I was able to crack open everything. And it's own little bench space. We've even got some rings exercise stuff going on, but we actually have a really good area here. So we're pretty stoked. So there's our dinghy under here. That's the dinghy. And you tell those. Sitting pretty. Thank you very much for joining in and watching. We hope you enjoyed and we will see you next week. These videos wouldn't be possible without our patrons and our sponsors. So thank you to them. Bye. Bye guys.